period costume play, which now it frequently does, it does its best to get the period details right, though there are always those who are ready to point out when it doesn't. To see something of how that's done, we paid a visit to the Dart Valley Railway Line in Devon, currently the location for a new BBC version of The Hound of the Baskervilles. This railway has a stable of seven steam engines and a man who is almost as used to appearing on television as working on the footplate. Up at five o'clock in the morning, here six o'clock to light up, clean the engine, to be down on location by 9.30. That station features in a lot of period films. We've done Pen Marrick down there, horsemen riding by. And 14 years ago, we done Hound of the Baskervilles down there, like we're doing tomorrow morning again. It's a repeat, really. <laughs> The valley line runs for seven miles between Buckfastley and Totnes. Midway down the line is Staverton Bridge Station, the location chosen for this production. By early morning, the television circus had arrived at Staverton, complete with its own restaurant, and a busload of press reporters to meet the latest Sherlock Holmes, played by Tom Baker. He knows everything, and he's yes. so rude and doesn't like women. I mean, he didn't even like Irene no. Adler. He had a very good chance yes, there. Yes. Maybe he didn't like mezzo-sopranos, although he did actually <laughs> like... Um, <laughs> Did you mention Can we? Uh, no, that's my next one. <laughs> On the station platform, the man whose job is to recreate the look and atmosphere of a 19th century railway station, the designer Michael Edwards. Under his direction, a team of carpenters, painters and scene shifters set about giving the platform a completely authentic appearance. A makeup caravan, which appears in the background of one scene, has to be camouflaged. We've got some black drapes. Yeah, throw black drapes over it. Yeah. Yeah. And then bring all that to all the whites, and then bring all this to here. The caravan is blacked out, and two portable yew trees help the disguise. But how are locations for a film like this chosen? Well, we'd start, first of all, by collecting all the reference we can find. And this is set in 1889, which means we can use old photographs, especially photographs of Devon. And these days, a lot of them are published, so uh, that makes the job easier. Here at the station, we've uh, brought all the enamel signs and put them up. We've built wooden sheds to hide corrugated iron sheds and put up trees and picked all the daffodils, which give us a long season, and uh, cleared up the gravel and disguised the road, added all the trucks and the sacks and the chickens, uh, anything that gives a feeling of the period, really. I've worked for the Dark Valley Railway Company for 14 years now and worked the first official train out of here on this line, which Lord, Lord Beechin opened for us. And, well, I made a change, him opening the line instead of closing, because he made me redundant on British railways in the first place. The Dart Valley line was originally opened in 1872, and so whatever is done at the station to hide the 20th century, the Victorian carriages are genuine period pieces. And if the Edwardian replica engine happens to be back to front, that's how it often was. The engine is actually facing in the wrong direction. That's quite normal on a branch line, by the way. Yes, it's just we weren't expecting that at all. I don't know. I have only been taken on again as an extra for. Oh, that one. That one does. Yeah. It's the same as that. Yeah. Exactly the same. During last-minute checks, it's pointed out that the porter's lapel badges are not matching, and so the wardrobe is quickly put to work. <laughs> but refurbishing the station is comparatively straightforward compared to the work of altering other Baskerville locations. Uh, Lifton Park, which is the Baskerville Hall, all the interiors were built in the studio. Uh, the house is meant to be 15th century with Victorian additions. And the house we found, which was exactly right for the field, but not quite right for the period, 
uh, we have changed the windows and started building the yew tree walk, which features in the story. And we've uh, set the house into the moors by using a glass shot and painting the moors on the glass and taking out all the woods that are really behind the house itself. Now all is ready for shooting to begin, and Sherlock Holmes waits for a visitor from London. Thank you for coming, Inspector. Anything good, Mr. Holmes? The biggest thing for years. Uh, no, no. Open warrant in my pocket. No London fog for you tonight, Mr. Strait. You're going to taste the pure night air of Dartmoor. You know the state. I shall soon be in a position to put in a single connection now. And so Staverton Bridge Station adds yet another to its long line of film credits. Janine. Oh, well done. Oh, he answers your description. <laughs> Janine, this is my brother, Adrian. Hello. Hello, Spotty. Stop that, fatty. I'm not fat. Adrian's not Spotty. Oh. That makes up useful and help with the luggage. Truth be told, I was jolly fed up with being a hero. Having to save the country two or three times a week meant I could get nothing done at all. Well, now at last, I was going to sit back and live a life of my own. I'd taken a short let on a cottage on the Cornish coast, as far away as I could possibly be from Whitehall. Hello, this is Torpoint, isn't it? Um, no. No, not really. The guard on the train put me off here. He must have been lying. Next stop, 